Hello, Squirrel Tribe, and welcome back. So listen, Minnesota was just in the spotlight for the 400,000-gallon water leak at its Xcel Energy uh, nuclear generating plant in Monticello that the state hid from residents since November 22nd of 2022. And today, y'all, they're back in the spotlight, but this time for the BNSF train derailment that has caused the evacuation of residents as chemicals burn. Where does this sound familiar? So that makes derailment number two for BNSF in the last 24 hours, by the way. Also, Ohio and Norfolk Southern are saying that it will now take two years, two years, 24 months, 365 plus 365, y'all can do the math on days, uh, to clean up the February 3rd Norfolk Southern train derailment and subsequent intentional release of five tankers full of vinyl chloride and the intentional uncontrolled burn of said chemicals. And just when you thought you wouldn't hear about another barge incident on the Ohio River within 24 hours, you were wrong. All this stuff, like it's like a whirlwind of just never ending crap here and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So we're gonna go to the barge first, okay? First off, there's still no update on yesterday's incident in Louisville, Kentucky with the uh, 11, 11 barges. Is it one barge with 11 cars on? It's not cars. I don't know what the right word er here is, people, but the barge yesterday that kind of got all jacked up at the McAlpine Lock and Dam in Louisville, Kentucky, there's been no update. I tried to find everything everywhere. I saw no update anywhere. Uh, did not check Twitter though. Uh, see, that's where I messed up. I did not check Twitter, uh, but I have not seen an update on what's happening with those last three containers that were up against the dam, the damn dam. Uh, one was methanol. And then I believe the others were either the other two that were there were either going to be corn or soybean oil. But one of those was methanol. And I've heard nothing updated on that. But what happened literally hours later, not even an entire day later, not even, tw I don't even think it was 12 hours later. This article here says the sky turned pitch black and a shelter in place was shelter in place was placed after a barge catches fire along the Ohio River. Again, the Ohio River. This seems to be the common denominator in a lot of things we have been talking about just for the past couple days, couple weeks, couple months. It all ends up going back to the Ohio River some way, somehow. So basically, the East Coast, the northeastern side of the United States is continuously just getting crapped on by all these instant incidences that are happening. So let me give, first off, the shelter in place has been lifted for uh, the barge containing diesel fuel that caught fire along the Ohio River. Let's see here. Um, Anita Salyers has lived across the street from the Ohio River for nearly three decades and says she'd never seen a boat fire quite like that one that erupted Wednesday evening. So it was really black. The sky, I'm glad it was blowing that way, but the sky turned pitch black. Then you saw a little bit of white and then you saw pitch black some more. And after a little while, you saw the flames from the barge. So <clears throat> this is hard to see. Let me see if I can show you guys this um, thing right here. This is after the barge fire ended. You guys can kind of see the smoke and stuff on coming off of that barge, right? So the barge, dun, 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 the fire, which is located near 5495 River Road, began around 3.30 p.m. And residents nearby were urged to shelter in place and also turn their HVAC, HVAC systems off due to the diesel fuel. It's unclear at the time what caused the barge, which is owned by McGinnis Inc., to catch fire. Now, I'm curious if that is the same company that owned the barge that had the mishap, if you will, the sinking of... Um, containers uh in louisville kentucky at the mcalpine lock and lock lock and lock lock dam lock and dam or i don't remember how to phrase that lock and dam dam and lock one of the two uh crews fought the fire from both the shore and the river and cfd assistant chief flagler said those fighting the fire had to be careful so they didn't sink the barge Flagler said there was never an indication that hazardous materials were burning on the barge, but the shelter in place was issued out of an abundance of caution due to the potential for smoke from as much as 4,000 gallons of diesel fuel to irritate people living by. Listen, I don't know if you're aware of this, but diesel fuel is also a hazardous <laughs> chemical. You can't drink it. You shouldn't get it in your eyes. Don't pour it on your skin. Don't inhale a ton of it because there will be adverse effects. Like, do they not realize that when they say no hazardous material were burning on the barge, well, diesel is hazardous. Okay, but anyway, it's just a caution because the smoke can be irritating, Flagler said. There's no hazardous materials or other kind of chemicals in that smoke. 
The assistant chief said fire crews were working with federal partners to test nearby waters and ensure nothing leaked into the river while fighting the blaze. And that's the end of that. So that's all I've got there. I can't tell what is on top of this in the barge. It does not say exactly what is in the barge or on top of the barge. So who knows what's going on there. But next thing we want to talk about is the main thing that happened uh, overnight. Again, a lot of these things happen overnight. The barge that went kapui in um, Louisville, Kentucky happened at 2 a.m. And this here, Minnesota City looks like a war zone as 40 car train containing ethanol is seen piled up on tracks as firefighters race to ext extinguish blaze and evacuate 800 people. Owners under fire after another derailed in North Dakota hours earlier. Okay, this happened at 1 a.m. It says here, a city in Minnesota has been left looking like war zone as cars from a train derailed and burst into flames in the early hours. The site of the incident in Raymond can be seen with a huge spill hours after authorities tackled the growing blaze. Hundreds of residents were evacuated after a 40-car freight train carrying hazardous substances careened off the tracks at around 1 a.m. on Thursday. The Burlington Northern Santa Fe train, BNSF for short, was carrying ethanol and corn syrup on around 14 of the carriages, which has which is what sparked the fire. Secretary of Transportation Pete Booty Booty Jug Booty Gig Pete Pete B uh, confirmed he was watching the situation closely and spoke out about the incident after being accused of not addressing a similar incident in Ohio last month. Ohio, again, everything goes back to Norfolk Southern. Ohio is suing Norfolk Southern Railroad Company over the devastating freight derailment which exposed the village of East Palestine to massive levels of toxic material. Cool. Now, this is the 40-car BNSF. Residents were evacuated. This is the picture of the 40 rail cars, or some of the 40 rail cars, that um, derailed in Raymond, where is this, Raymond, Minnesota, overnight in the middle of the night. Uh, it says here, Governor Tim Watts traveled to the area and confirmed that residents would be allowed to return to their homes later on today after it was deemed safe by officials. Here's my problem. Here's my problem, y'all. Officials being city officials, generally speaking, don't have a clue as to what is safe or not unless they bring in people who deal with these chemicals on a daily basis and will give you the honest answer if it's safe or not. This train... In this fire, they had ethanol on it, okay? Ethanol is not something you want to be inhaling, right? So the whole, we'll let the, the governor or the mayor or the person who sits at the front desk in City Hall let you know when to come back in. I, I have an issue with that every single time. It says, there have been no reported injuries in Raymond confirmed yet. You see the word yet. And authorities have set up a one-mile perimeter for safety in around the site. It comes hours after another Burlington Northern Santa Fe, BNSF, uh, train came off the tracks on Wednesday morning near a grain elevator in Hedinger. There were no hazardous materials on board as the cars were transporting grain and there were no injuries. Um, that's a different one altogether. But let me show you another picture of this from the train derailment. You can see here. You see the red right there? That is a hazardous chemical placard, just FYI, on that one. And I don't know if that means, it says it's a level two, so I don't know if that's the ethanol or if that is the corn syrup. I'm not quite sure which one is in there. But the fact of the matter is, there is something in there. Oh, so here's the picture that's hard to see. But this is a picture of the fire at 1 a.m. from these uh, derailed cars, just FYI. So if you're in the Raymond area, y'all, stay away. Even if they tell you to go home, unless you literally, literally must be back in your house right, right now, right then and there, don't do it. Give it a little bit of extra time if you possibly can. If you have somewhere else you can go for a day or two, if you have the means and ability to stay in a hotel or something for a day or two, do so. Don't take their, their knee-jerk reaction of, no, 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 it's fine, come back. Because you see what's happening to the residents of East Palestine, Ohio. They were told within 24 hours, no, come on back, everything's fine. And now just a massive shit show because it's not fine immediately afterwards. They don't know exactly what the extent of these things are when you're burning these chemicals. Like, you're not going to know within five minutes, huh, there's a lot of chemicals burning over there. Nah, it's fine. It's not going to do anything. Come on in. Don't do it. That, if, you can, if you can not do it, please don't do it. So the next thing we need to talk about here um, is the fact 
that fire, first derailment. Okay, so the first derailment of BNSF actually happened yesterday morning, um, Wednesday morning. BNSF train derails in Hedinger. Building struck a grain elevator. Building struck at grain elevator. Okay, the wording here is stupid. So this is the first derailment for BNSF on Wednesday, one of two. This one says several cars from a Burlington Northern Santa Fe train left the tracks Wednesday morning near a grain elevator in Hedinger. I like how suddenly they're like spelling out the entire name. It's always been BNSF, CSX, Norfolk Southern, but in Union Pacific. But right now they're like going balls to the walls. Burlington Northern Santa Fe. They want to throw out the whole name. I wonder if that's, I wonder if there's a reason behind that. I always wonder why things are worded the way they are. If you're not supposed to put two and two together, that is BNSF, or if they want the words Burlington and Northern and Santa Fe spoken that many times. Just, sorry, my brain does these weird things. Okay, Adams County Sheriff Jordan Fisher said they were notified of a possible derailment around 8.30 a.m. Fisher said no one was injured and there were no hazardous materials on board because grain isn't hazardous. However, the diesel fuel that's in the train is still considered hazardous, in my opinion. The sheriff indicated the derail, derailed cars transport grain. Fisher said one vehicle struck and damaged a, build, a building at the elevator site, but indicated there were no other property damage. Uh, crossings are open for traffic. They reached out to BNSF for more information, including the number of cars that derailed and updates uh, will be more later. So here's this weird, it's like they're just tilted and holding like tilt and hold, like they didn't, some of them didn't fall over, some of them did, but it's such a weird tilt, you know what I mean? Like what's propping it there? I know it's, I'm sure it's gravity or in, and friction and all that other fun stuff, but you guys will notice, I will say notice that there is snow on the ground. I wonder how it works when trains are going over railroads that I'm sure they get icy just like bridges and regular roads do. So I wonder if in areas like this, you have a better chance of derailment. Ohio, y'all, the East Palestine, Ohio, when technically it was freezing there, there was snow and, and ice around in that area. So I wonder if that is another issue that causes these derailments. And if that is the case, shouldn't there be some sort of way to keep, I don't want to know, I don't know if keeping the railroads heated is an option. I know that's expensive as I'll get out, but there has to be something that can be done if if ice is actually an issue on why some of these are derailing. There has to be something that can be done to prevent that, whether it is somebody who works for the railroads for those lines going out in the winter and in these in these conditions and spraying something or putting salt down or something like that. Like we do it for cars, we do it for trucks and stuff like that. Why wouldn't you do it for trains also? So that's just a random thought I just had. Um, but what I want to show you, you guys, this is what kills me. This is what kills me. Building, freaking rail line, literally, literally, like 12 inches apart. Why? Why do you need your stuff that close to the trains? And then you wonder why your building gets all jacked up if something derails. Why would you want to be that close to these things? It does not make sense to me. Now, I understand maybe because, maybe, I don't know how this works, but maybe because they are picking up grain and that is a grain place. Maybe the grain little, little, the claw, like the claw, it, it picks up the grain and it scoots over 12 inches and drops it into the cart. That's the only thing I can think of and why you would need to be that freaking close to the rail line. It doesn't make sense to me at any point. In never in my life would I think that I would want to put my building right next to a train or an airport or like an airplane as it's taking off you miss the the wing by this much like I don't understand why building like that is allowed because you know that there are going to be issues surrounding it and I know again profit over people um, if that's the cheapest land you can buy and you only have this much money people are gonna buy it companies are gonna buy it and they're gonna put their buildings up there they've got insurance it's fine right whatever it just doesn't make sense to me that's all it doesn't make any sense to me so um i said it before and i say and look i wrote a note i said it before and it looks like i will continue to say it but the locations of these derailments sure are fishy right against a grain elevator really like if it takes out the elevator can you still get the grain out of the building out for transport like i don't know how grain elevators work but that's what i i I assume that the elevator is what takes the things up or down and so you can get it in or out. And if it doesn't work, does that stop the, not the production, but does that stop the 
the movement of the grain from that, from that building. That was just another thought. Um, now back to the never ending East Palestine saga, y'all. I would say it just gets so much better, but it doesn't. And that's the problem. It's not getting better. So Norfolk Southern commits to hiring Ohio businesses for East Palestine cleanup. Well, isn't that nice of them? Mm -hmm. So Norfolk Southern has agreed to exclusively, listen to this because there's a catch at the end. So meh. Norfolk Southern has agreed to exclusively hire Ohio companies and workers to do all future repair and replacement work stemming from the East Palestine train derailment, Ohio attorney Dave Yost announced on Wednesday, yesterday. We didn't ask for this accident to happen here in Ohio or in East Palestine. He says it, but y'all, we don't, we don't know. We don't know. Um, and we would be quite happy not to have to deal with it, Yost said during a news conference in Trumbull County. But since this accident did happen, I'm pleased that Norfolk Southern has signed off on the agreement and that Ohio businesses are going to benefit. I don't think Norfolk Southern should have one flippin' say in it personally. If Ohio says, hey, listen, you came into our state, you came into our city and you junked it up, it's up to us who gets to do the cleanup and Norfolk Southern should just be like, okay, we'll pay the bill. It should not be up to Norfolk Southern to say, yeah, we'll allow it or not. Screw them. That's all I have to say about uh, Norfolk Southern. The Youngstown slash Warren Regional Chamber of Commerce will serve as Norfolk Southern's main resource in finding materials and services for the job, according to Yoast. Let me just interject here real quick, but we're going to get to this in a second. They're saying it's going to take two years to clean this up. Let me put this out there, y'all. If you are a small business or you want to start a small business that deals in the cleanup or anything that needs to be done in this area right now would be a really good time to open a business in Ohio. Just putting it out there. Okay, so this, is, I know this sounds jacked up, but um, what somebody said it in a comment on one of my videos one time, and I was like, that's stupid, but I guess it makes sense. Um, never let a good, never let a tragedy go to waste, right? And I know they were saying it like a jackass because I'm talking about these things, but it's because people need to know, whatever. But I, I am looking at it from a business standpoint. Also, if, they have, if they're saying that only Ohio companies can be hired, that would mean that if you happen to have a company already um, based in another state or something that, that works in the whole cleanup or removal or building because there's a, or, cl or just cleaning of like residential areas even or landscaping, there's so much stuff that's going to need to be done if they're doing this correctly. And if they are planning on letting East Palestine, Ohio be rebuilt so that people can continue to live there as they were and as they want to versus it turning into what I worry it's going to turn into, which is just demolished for business purposes and pipelines and shell petrochemical and, and stuff like that. If they're going to do it the right way and let these people literally get back to their lives. Now is a very good time to either start a business in Ohio <laughs> to be part of this or to DBA your business into Ohio. If you already have a business in another state and you know that you can do what needs to be done, you need a second branch in Ohio, my dudes. Like I'm just, I'm trying to help anybody out there who knows that they could do this and, and, and they need the work and stuff like that. And they would hire people in Ohio to help do the work. I think that's a great thing. So I just wanted to really quickly, my brain thought of that, I just wanted to put it out there. It says here that um, Norfolk Southern's commitment to hire within the state has no bearing on the lawsuit the state of Ohio filed earlier this month against transportation company. Norfolk Southern will be in East Palestine as long as it takes to help the community recover and thrive. Norfolk Southern President and CEO Alan Shaw said in a news release distributed by Yost's office. As we make progress every day, we are continuing our efforts to hire Ohio companies and Ohio workers to perform future work in the East Palestine area. We look forward to supporting local businesses. The EPA, the U.S. EPA, in February ordered Norfolk Southern to conduct all necessary actions associated with the cleanup of the February 3rd derailment and chemical spill. Not a chemical spill. <laughs> That's that wording. Chemical release. It didn't spill. They let it out on purpose. There was not like, whatever. Five of the cars that jumped the tracks contained vinyl chloride, a highly flammable gas that they then decided to just set on fire for shits and giggles. Um, that's been linked to a rare form of liver cancer. Surprising. Just one more time. We're just going to put these dots together. So you have this train come through carrying vinyl chloride. It derails weirdly in the spot that it did the same spot 
of the city where people had just gotten the My ID bracelets, just happens to be right across the street, basically, from Shell Petrochemical. So it derails, and then one of the tankers might possibly sort of kind of maybe have some sort of issue with a valve on top. It looks like it could possibly maybe explode. So we should spend the next three days digging a trench instead of finding a way to move that one that one tanker worth of stuff out. We'll dig a trench for three days and then we'll release all five tankers. Although only one of them had a, a chance or a, a concern of exploiting. We're just gonna go ahead and release all of them into this trench that we've spent three days uh, cu uh, cutting out or whatever you wanna call it, digging. We're gonna release all that into the soil. And then we understand how highly flammable this stuff is. So what we should do is light it on fire. We also understand that it causes cancer and numerous, numerous uh, health ad, uh, ad Ad, ad, adversaries? No. Effects? Health? What's the word? It starts in A? Can't think of it. Health? Bad health things. So we should definitely light it on fire, right? And just let it go out into the air and just willy-nilly float wherever the wind will take it? Great idea. Sounds like a great idea. So that's what they've done. Um, back to where we were. State and local officials decided to burn off Again, I told you this before, state and local officials decided to burn off the carcinogen in order to avoid what they fear would be a larger explosion that could have sent shrapnel into nearby homes. State and local officials, you know, the two people or the two types of things who have no fucking clue about chemicals and what should or should not be done with them. Mm. So there's my issue there. They let state and local officials decide what to do. This technically is on the heads of state and local officials. Norfolk Southern, just as guilty because they should have been like, hey, y'all, probably not the best idea. I don't know. Maybe we should just let the one explode and, you know, everybody should be out anyway. We shouldn't let anybody back in. We haven't contained this. We haven't done anything. So that um, immediate evacuation, we should make them stay away for a few days until this settles down. Oh, no, no, no. You let them back in their houses? Oh, I guess we can't have shrapnel flying around. But that, to me, would have been a safer bet. Evacuate the people. Don't immediately tell them to come back like a bunch of dumbasses like they did. Not the people. Not the people coming back are dumbasses. The ones who said to come back are the dumbasses. Please get that correct. Um, but if they had not let them back in, okay, if they had said, hey, give it 72 hours, give it 96 hours. I don't think that's the right math. No, that's the right math. 24, 48, 72, 96, right? Sure. Give it 96 hours. Hell, give it 100 and however, however many. I don't, I can't do math while I talk. So give it that many hours. And if the thing had exploded, the one and shrapnel had gone places, they could have figured that out as opposed to what has happened. I feel like what they did was the worst possible option out of what could have happened. But the fact that state and local officials are the ones who decided that that was the route to go, mm, heads should roll. Let me just put it that way says here, federal and state environmental officials continue to oversee the cleanup of the derailment site. This is where it gets interesting, are y'all? I mean, it's all been interesting, but this is, this is big. According to the Ohio EPA, you know, the ones who are going through that um, internal investigation right now, uh, approximately 9.27 million, million gallons of liquid wastewater have been hauled out of East Palestine along with 11,900 tons of excavated soil. As of Wednesday, yesterday, 23,000 tons of soil has yet to be removed. So, okay, here, here's the thing. 9.27 million gallons of liquid wastewater. We know some of the places they said they were taking it to, but how much did they really take there? And then Baltimore yesterday was like, mm, we ain't taking your crappy water. We're not taking your 675,000 gallons of wastewater. You need to figure out something else to do with it. So where is that water right now? Where did it go? Where are the other 23,000 tons of soil that has yet to be removed? Where is it going to go? Which soil did they test for um, whatever tests are sitting out? Did they test from the 11,900 excavated soil that's already been gone? Are they, did, is a test from the 20, 23,000 tons of soil that's yet to be removed? Are they testing from the soil that's still in the ground? Because here's the thing, the soil test that they're doing, if they're doing it from the sites where they've already removed the contaminated soil, of course their results are gonna come back that your soil is fine. If, you, if you're testing water where water has already been removed, of course your water is gonna come back saying that it's fine. I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. The ongoing cleanup, according to Yoast, will cost Norfolk Southern millions 
good. Uh, and that's money he wants Ohio businesses and workers to benefit from. Ohioans are highly capable, you said, so there's no reason to look elsewhere. You know who's not highly capable in Ohio? <laughs> there's state and local officials who decided to release all this stuff in the ground and set it on fire and therefore, you know, cause all these health issues. That's the word we're going to go with, health issues to their citizens, their residents. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's my thought on that one. So just... Okay, so after that, here's an update just really quick. I want to do, we got two updates also on top of this. So the Union Pacific, nope, nope, we're going to go to that one second. This one's more important. Hold on, hold on, please hold. So East Palestine update as of 329. This is yesterday. I'm on uh, the governor.ohio.gov. I'll put a link to this in the pinned comment. For those of you who want to jump into the comments and go, you don't put up the stuff you say you're going to put up. Well, you're not looking where I said to look. Pinned comment. So check the pinned comment when you're done. So East Palestine, Ohio. This is as of yesterday. The following are updates from the state of Ohio regarding remediation work at the site of the Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Now, grain of salt. Because we're going to hope that they are telling us the truth on these updates. There's a chance or not. We already know that. There's a chance that they're lying through their teeth because their head's up their butts. There's, there's a chance that this is all crap and none of it's factual. I've gone to the, the city of East Palestine, Ohio Facebook page. It's not run by the government there. It's run by the citizens and I've checked things there. And every once in a while you'll see something put up where somebody says they're sick, but they're, just their Facebook has gone back to regular everyday life where it is Jeep takeover and Easter egg hunts in the park on April 8th, I think, which y'all, I have a severe issue with that. Let me just go ahead. I don't live there. I have not been there. I know the Angry Prepper and Status Quo News, they've gone there. They've talked to people. They've been in the area. So maybe they have a better idea than I do. But it would seem to me, if the residents there are seriously worried about their, excuse me, their soil and the things like that, why are you having an Easter egg hunt in the city of East Palestine? I, I understand you want the kids to live a normal life and get back to things the way they were. Why is my nose always itch when I'm talking to you guys? They want to get back to the way things were. But why... Why? I mean, Easter egg hunts, generally speaking, they're in dirt. You know what I'm saying? They're in bushes and trees and dirt and things like that. You go put these little eggs out there and these kids run around and they pick them up and they play with them. And if there's candy inside, they open it up and they eat it after their little hands have been in that dirt, that contaminated dirt, soil, whatever. I'm just saying, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, could we move it like outside of East Palestine, Ohio or into a gymnasium somewhere? I don't know. I, I just, it's weird to me that as much as you want to get back to regular life, that you don't still take a few precautions. And again, outside looking in, maybe as an outsider, I have no say in this and I, that I understand that, uh, fine. It just, to me, when it comes to your children, the ones who have the uh, higher chance of getting sick from things because of their immune systems, I I just, I wouldn't, and that, that's just me. But it says here, Ohio, uh, Environment Manufacturing and Critical Materials Subcommittee Hearing. Ohio EPA Director Ann Vogel testified before the U.S. House of Representatives yesterday concerning Ohio EPA's ongoing work to help clean up and restore the derailment site, and that wasn't important, so sorry about that. Um, 9.2, we've already talked about that. Additional public drinking water system treatment. Okay, this is important. Weekly monitoring water of at the Village Municipal, again, East Palestine, Ohio is not a city, it is not a town, it is a village. Uh, at, the, at the village municipal wells and of treated drinking water continues and results to date have not shown any contamination related to the derailment. Now, <laughs> I need you to also, again, hear what they're not saying. No contamination related to the derailment. They're not saying no contamination. They're just saying related to the derailment. There's contamination, I'm sure. But they're going to say it's not related to the derailment. So there's that. Uh, as a precaution, the village of East Palestine has worked with its consultant and Ohio EPA to identify additional measures to ensure the long-term sustainability of the water supply. This week, the village approved the receipt of $425,499 from Norfolk Southern to proactively obtain and install carbon filtration at their water treatment plant. This is part of a contingency plan to ensure that East Palestine has a proper treatment in place moving forward. I'm, I don't know a lot about water filtration systems, but I feel like places should already have that. They should already have carbon filtration, right? Or no, right? 
Because I feel like that's a thing. I feel like that should already be a thing. Now I got to look that up because I'm not sure. If you guys know, leave a comment. Shouldn't municipals, municipalities already have some sort of carbon filtration system along with all their other filtration systems to make sure the water is clean? No? Yes? I don't know. Okay. Um, the EPA is working closely with the village for the needed engineering review and approvals to expedite the completion of this important proactive and protective measure. Monitoring well results. A series of monitoring wells were installed in the immediate vicinity of the derailment and between the derailment site and the village's well filled to monitor groundwater for the potential of contaminants associated with the incident. Five monitoring wells have been drilled so far and results today have shown no chemicals associated with the derailment of the water. In the water, sorry. Water monitoring is a long-term process and there currently is no end date for the monitoring. And then there's a link to latest results that you guys can take a look at. Private well testing continuing to show no harmful levels of contaminants, not zero contaminants, no harmful levels. Now let's also keep in mind that the CDC likes to go through and randomly change what they consider harmful levels of something um, willy nilly. So the harmful levels of dioxin used to be like, now I can't remember, 700 parts per trillion. And now it's like seven, no, 3.2 parts per trillion. Like they've they scaled it down like or back or whatever significantly to the same thing with the vinyl chloride. It was, it was lower. And then as soon as right before this derailment, they're like, Oh no, you can have way more vinyl chloride in your system. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Like the, the changing of things makes me wonder when they say no, have not shown any harmful contaminant levels. Is that before or after the CDC tweaked the contamination levels or what they consider harmful on those same chemicals. That's just my question here. Um, what? Cat necropsies? If your animal has died for an unknown reason, contact your local veterinarian for further consult consultation and guidance. The general public cannot submit an animal or tissue sample to the ADDL without a vet veterinarian order. Ew, people, y'all out there, they send it in tissue samples of your animals? That means you have to cut a tissue sample of your animal. Ew, don't. Ew. Okay. That's ew to me. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't do stuff like that, but I don't live on a farm. So I also don't like d behead chickens and do things to cows and stuff. So maybe for people like the, the Amish, cause this is, this, this is an Amish country. Maybe for the Amish people who butcher their own meat on a daily, that's not really a big deal to me on the outside. I'm just like, I can't picture like carving a sample off my dog. The, that's where my brain goes. And I, I can't, I can't. Nope. Not doing that. All right. So where are we going? Surveying first response. I'm just going to put the rest of this stuff in. What the? Hold on. <gasps> okay. 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 No, 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 no. So on March 5th, the health department began surveying those who were first responders to the derailment. The department held a rollout meeting with various organizations to provide information and answer questions about the survey and is reaching out through emails and flyers as well to encourage participation. Both surveys are called ACE, after chemical exposure surveys, but responders are asked several different questions such as how many shifts they worked as well as what PPE they may have worn. Of the 2,207 2, respondents, the top five symptoms first responders reported were stuffy nose slash sinus congestion, 27% of them, runny nose, 26%, Increased congestion and phlegm, 22%. Burning nose or throat, 21%. Hoarseness, 16%. The community ACE survey now has been taken by 514 residents. Residents can take the survey through a healthcare provider or at the ODH uh, Health Assessment Clinic in East Palestine. The top four symptoms reports, uh, residents report have remained the same throughout the survey period. Headache, 75%. Anxiety, 61%. Hell, I don't live there and I have anxiety for you. Uh, coughing, 54%. Fatigue slash tiredness, 53%. Recently, stuffy nose slash sinus congestion reported by 50% of residents who responded has overtaken irritation, pain, and burning of the skin, 50%, as the fifth most common symptom reported. Y'all, okay. So I'm going to put this, th this will definitely be in the pinned comment. Make sure you take a look at that. There's a couple extra links inside that article that you may want to take a look at also. Um, now the other thing I was going to talk to you about just really quickly is how long are we doing this? 34 minutes. Whoo, y'all, I know y'all got stuff to do. Um, I do want to mention 
that, where is it? Uh, pipeline factory, chocolate factory. I don't know. The article. Okay. So I wanted to, I never talked about the um, explosion at the, the chocolate plant in Pennsylvania, the deadly chocolate factory blast um, that happened in where in Pennsylvania, where is it? Uh, the RM Palmer Co. So this happened while I was kind of dealing with the whole threats and I was told to just kind of step back for a minute while everything was figured out, make sure safety, because safety first, you know, for myself and my family. So I never got to talk about this, but this is a picture really quickly of the aftermath of the explosion. Y'all can see right over here, the building that is missing, the aftermath of the explosion of the, the chocolate factory in uh, West Reading, Pennsylvania on Saturday, March 25th. So no, no, emergency responders have equipment is seen at the site. No, that didn't happen on March 25th. That was at the site of it right? Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I don't remember what date that it happened on, but here's what I wanted to read to you. It says, last week's fatal blast at a Pennsylvania chocolate factory highlighted the combustibility of food plants in general and chocolate making in particular. The powerful explosion Friday at RM Palmer Co. killed seven people, sent 10 to the hospital, and damaged several other buildings in West Reading, a small town 60 miles northwest of Philly, where the 75-year-old family-owned company has had a Company has long had a factory. I'm dyslexic sometimes, I swear. Local, state, and federal investigations are ongoing. Pennsylvania State Police have said everything's on the table as fire marshals try to pinpoint the origin and cause. Some workers told relatives they smelled natural gas before the blast, although the gas utility, UGI, said it received no reports of a gas leak. On Tuesday, federal officials said they were investigating the role of a natural gas pipeline in the explosion. A look at some of the hazards of food manufacturing and what may have been behind the fatal blast. So here it says the risk. In general, commercial ovens and furnaces, uh, commercial refrigeration, a refrigerant using ammonia and combustible dust produced by ingredients like cocoa powder and cornstarch are primary explosive hazards at food plants, according to Holly Burgess, technical lead for industrial and chemical safety at the National Fire Protection Association, a nonprofit group that produces hundreds of codes and standards. Most people, if you've not been in any sort of food manufacturing, you don't understand what your hazards are and what you're looking at. Chocolate companies and other food manufacturers must take steps to mitigate the risk of fire and explosion from dust. Uh, smaller particles that stay aloft pose a greater danger than bigger particles that quickly fall to the floor. It is a common concern at many food production facilities handling fine combustible particles or oh, particulates. Um, food manufacturers are supposed to determine the combustibility of the dust, perform a hazard analysis, and then take steps to manage it, adhering to the Fire Protection Association standard for preventing dust explosions in food processing plants. Now, the reason I bring that up to you is because... Um, I read the article and it gives me the, they are explaining why these things happen kind of vibes like before more of these things happen. Like we had a lot of processing plants just have explosions and fires over the last year or two. Um, coincidentally during all the shortages and stuff, it's just like such a weird timing kind of thing there. But with this article, and them coming out to say, you know, they don't think it's a natural gas explosion or because of a natural gas leak, but they're talking about how the foods themselves, the, the particles of the foods themselves, excuse me, hiccups can cause these, these issues. I feel like we need to be paying attention to what happens in the next few days, weeks, and months with any other food plants, not just chocolate, but any food plants whatsoever, if there are more explosions and see if they blame it on the same thing, the dust particles of this food and whatever else. It just, for me, it feels like a precursor to seeing more of these kind of things happen because we hadn't seen these in a while. We had, it's been a, it's been a minute since we saw a food processing plant explosion or anything like that. And so for when this one happened and now they're trying to say that it's probably not the natural gas, it's probably because of the food particles themselves that just gives me this weird vibe that I, I'm going to be paying attention to everything along those lines. Now, uh, there's a lot more that I wanted to talk about, but I'm not going to do that to you guys today. I'll give you a 40 minute video and call her done. We'll do more of these tomorrow. Uh, they're interesting. They, they aren't related to the things we've talked about today. So it's an easy transition tomorrow. So, um, I love you all. I hope you are having a good Thursday. 
I would like you, if you know anything about anything we've talked about today, leave comments below because the easiest way for all of us to learn is all of us to help each other learn. They're not saying everything in mainstream media. It's, you're never going to get it. It's not going to say it all in these articles. Even I read, that's why I try to dig and find new things and dots and, and things like that. But for those of you who live in these areas who are legitimately there and can see what's happening, let us know, you know, leave comments. If you want, email me. My email is on the about section of my channel. I think it's easier to find if you go to the actual channel on, um, your laptop or your computer or whatever, as opposed to an app. It, sometimes it doesn't show, I guess. I don't know. But send me things if you want. DM me over on Instagram and send me things over there if you have something pertaining to the things that we're talking about or that you think that we as a society need to know that mainstream media is just hush-hush about. Send me some stuff. Um, but that's it for now. I will be back tomorrow with more. There's always, unfortunately, like that's the downside. There's always something there's always something. And it's just absolutely shitty that there's always something. Uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye out on all the things we talked about today. See if there's any updates tomorrow. Still no update on the coal, the iron ore derailment in um, San Bernardino. Y'all dogged me like crazy for pronouncing the R because that's how it's spelled. And I was like, Bernardino. And my brain was going, no, it's Bernardino. Like that's how you hear it. But I tried to do it the right way and y'all dogged the crap out of me for that. So, but I still have not seen an update on that train that derailed. I believe that one was the Union Pacific that derailed in San Bernardino or yeah, San Bernardino, um, a couple days ago with the, with the, uh, iron ore, just keep an eye on everything. So I love you all again for the 17th time and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.